Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. So I hope you all are doing well. Um, let me make sure that Brian is able to speak. Uh, okay. All right, so we are again uh, here for our next session uh, of the fundamentals of uh, organizing and uh, writing academic research papers. Uh, please take note that this session is being recorded. All your mic have been uh, muted. So uh, at the end of the session, if you have any question, you can raise your hand and I will unmute you or you can post your question uh, in the chat box. Uh, as always, uh, uh, this, as I've said, uh, even in the last few sessions, this is a fundamental session for those of you uh, who have interest in writing academic research papers. The lessons are designed uh, not just for, for academic staff, but also for students and anybody else. So we do have uh, participants uh, that have come in the past uh, who's not from this state or not from the DOU. So hope this session will actually benefit all of you. So today we are at lesson number four, at the introduction. We already completed the first three. Those of you who have missed the first three, who wants the recording, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. All the sessions are recorded. All the sites are also, slides are also provided for you. So there'll be three of us, uh, Prof. Brian Imri, who's the CEO and of this college and also the adjunct professor Wawa San. Uh, I'm uh, uh, the president of this and also a uh, uh, professor at Wawasan, and then we also have uh, Ms. Fairo Nizan, who is the Chief Librarian at the District uh, Library. So today's session is focused on writing the introduction, which is another key aspect of your research. So there's three sections again, uh, where Prof. Brian will handle the, the first three part, uh, first part of the presentation that is focusing on the purpose of a good introduction and what is the approach you take when you start writing an introduction. Then I will go through with you the details of what should be inside the introduction chapter before uh, Ms. Fairuniza takes you through uh, into some of the resources that is available in the library to help you when you start uh, doing your introduction or, or in general writing. So without uh, much delay, let me hand over the first part of the presentation to Prof. Brian Imri. Uh, thanks, Prof. Vic. Um, and th thanks uh, once again, everyone, for joining us for this research seminar. I think that it's, uh, you know, it's fundamental. There's some, even for more established researchers, it's sometimes good to go back and look at how you can improve. All right. So there's, um, a, there's four major points I'll be covering in my section, uh, looking at uh, defining what is a good introduction, moving on to looking at structure and approach, then uh, delimitations of study and then um, narrative flow. Um, so, so, you know, the, 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 the purpose, well, let me say last week we, we uh, mentioned, or last time we met, we mentioned that you should do an abstract last, right? And, uh, and the rationale behind that is, okay, you don't know uh, the full scope of your study, uh, the, uh, the research outcome until that the whole process is finished, all right? Um, some of those same principles also apply to an introduction, but it's still something worth beginning to write um, early in the process. I'll touch more upon that later. Um, so the uh, so, but the purpose of an introduction is quite is quite simple to give, give an overview of of the entire study. Okay, um, so so to allow the reader um, to be guided really from this general idea of the of the, of the study through uh, more specifically what you are addressing and then and how you're planning to address it. So the diagram on the, the right, the inverted um, pyramid or inverted triangle is, is, uh, is a good illustration of this, going from the general to the more specific, all right? So in, in the first stage, uh, stage one there, um, looking at um, the current understanding of the background information about the topic, right? So it's going very broad. Then, and then narrowing down as you progress downwards through the, uh, the pyramid, uh, through two and three, um, to state the purpose of the work. And that can be stated in various forms, and we're going to touch on that. Uh, it could be in the form of a hypothesis, 
a question or a research problem. Then explaining some of the rationale why you have chosen that topic. And I think it's, I think it's also important to point out, not all research has to be based upon previous research, right? So while it's a good idea if you're doing a, uh, a research thesis or something, uh, to have a good solid uh, basis of previous theory, um, obviously research has to start somewhere. And, and sometimes it starts from a real world problem um, that, that is really demanding a solution. So there's an opportunity to, yeah, to talk about the, the frameworks, research framework, but also how does it relate to the real world? You then, uh, I would, in, in stage three uh, on the pyramid, you're then really focusing in on your specific problem and how you're going to address it. Okay, so that, that includes uh, your, your choice of method. Now, we will be touching upon that later. And there's a whole um, spectrum of different uh, method, methodological approaches um, that, that can be employed depending on the the, uh, the research hypotheses, question or problem that you are trying to solve. And, um, but there should also, the introduction should conclude with um, highlighting um, potential outcomes, okay? And how it might be used in practice. And lastly, describing the structure of the remaining part of the paper. So it's, really, it's setting it up so it's easy for the reader They've got an idea of the context. It's, it's significantly more than an abstract, but, but it typically is one of the shorter chapters in a thesis or the shorter section in a research paper. Okay. All right, so, so, the, so now we're going to look at the general structure and approach. Um, as I said, it's, it's, um, it's often one of the uh, chapters you want to start early, but it's one of the ones you will probably finish last, and maybe the last section rather uh, that you may finish last, other than your abstract. Um, and and the reason for that is because your research will evolve, all right, and, and and will become more focused over time. But you do want to start early, so you actually have something to guide you, so you don't you don't wander too far too far away from your your topic as stated in your title. All right, so you at the begin, beginning of the uh, paper, again, you start quite broad as per our previous diagram, but, uh, and, um, and then you become more narrow as you progress. So you need to um, guide the reader so they, so they understand what, what it is that, uh, that's been, um, being um, presented here through this research. Why should they read it? So it needs to be an element of marketing, okay? You need to actually sell your idea that's worthwhile for them to actually read on and um and and what do and, and what do we want the reader to think um uh, and react to um as they progress through the paper so there, there has to be a systematic um, organization of the um of the introduction okay it's not simply a uh, a filler, if you like, okay? It is charting um, uh, in, in a very summated way uh, what it is that, that you're, they're trying to do, what's the contribution it's gonna make, the method, and then also uh, uh, com communicating the structure of the remaining um, sections of the paper. Next. Okay, general phrases uh, in writing the introduction. All right, so, so um, you would start, um, oh, well, when you're writing, you need to uh, really guide the reader, right? So they understand the area of your research, the, spe the specific niche or sometimes called gap and, um, and how your research uh, fits within the wider literature base. So the, um, so, uh, um, as I mentioned before, um, it doesn't have uh, a research area doesn't have to be been previously researched, but usually it would have been. All right, so you, you commence usually we're looking at uh, the importance of the topic, making some general statements about uh, the topic, 
and presenting an overview of the research. Now, it's not a detailed overview. You would look at some of the more fundamental research in the area and then, um, then focus in on, the, on your niche or gap that you're trying to fill, right? So typically a supervisor supervising an undergraduate or research student uh, would, would uh, spend some time with you um, um, before you even set your research title. Um, and have sat down with you and led you through in a, in a, in a dialogue and sent you away to do some reading uh, to uh, arrive at an understanding what is the research gap that you're trying to address, All right? So it's so, a so research gap or research niche, it's another way of specifying it, it is where uh, you look at the various different op opposing uh, uh, literature, um, uh, um, and then begin to see, okay, there's a gap to be filled or a problem to be solved if it's not a, a theoretical um, based uh, research. And then, um, then you formulate a research question or hypothesis or problem, okay? And we'll talk more about the, um, the difference between those when we get to the methodology section, all right? And that's, uh, that will relate back to uh, your, your problem and your specific uh, capabilities that you bring as a researcher to solving a problem and your and your view of research and 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 also uh, just when you're talking about your research niche or gap you you would be wanting to actually take a look at um, how this fits within the broader discipline okay so what is the contribution that others have made okay and and how you con are contributing sometimes if you're doing uh, a piece of research, maybe in consumer behavior, and you're looking at the consumer decision-making process, all right, you will introduce uh, a model, and then you'll, see, you'll identify there's a gap and pro be proposing a, an extension or replacement of part of that model, and then going out and testing it, for example. All right, so, and then, um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so that, and then you sort of conclude with stating the intent of your study, outlining the specific characteristics of what you're, you're going to do and providing uh, an indication of how important this research is. Okay, again, this goes back to it having a sort of a marketing focus. You want people to read on. But this is the, the purpose of introduction is that you, you want to read on and then uh, at the last point, you're providing the structure. Okay, next slide. Delimitations of the study. You need to, this is where you need to tell the reader clearly what your research is, but also what it is not. Uh, so, so, what, so what is not including your study, as well as uh, what uh, is the scope of what is included. And the underlying rationale of why this is so, all right? So, um, so through the discourse that you, uh, in that very brief su um, summary in a paper or a, a chapter in a thesis, you need to uh, talk the reader through your rationale for your choice of, um, of your niche, of your gap, all right? So, so, you, so why you have, have included or excluded uh, certain perspectives. And that will lead them to the research problem and, uh, and, and uh, will inform the creation of the specific research questions or objectives that you are going to address. All right, so you're telling a story uh, that how you've been on the journey, you've looked at this author has said that, this, the other author has said this, there's something to be solved in, in, the, in the middle of this, and this is, this is meaningful, okay? And then, and then, and then you, you can relate to the reader, um, what uh, impact this will have upon um, the broader discipline or upon society if it's very, um, uh, you know, if it has wider implications outside of theory. Now, delimitations should not be confused with documenting the limitations of study. That actually happens at the, and normally the, towards the end of your, your study, where you actually have a list of things saying, hey, th this is what I've contributed. Um, However, it has limited um, applicability for these specific reasons. Okay, next slide. Narrative and flow. Okay, so uh, this is actually 
Uh, I mean, I'm a bit of a wordsmith. I am someone who will labor over a sentence for far too long. Um, so, so there, there is some, but there are some general uh, guides that you should keep in mind as you write your introduction. Uh, it should clearly identify the, uh, the area of interest. A good idea is actually look at your title and make sure that it's rephrased in some way very early, maybe the very you know, few, first few sentences of your introduction so that you don't wander around, away from your, from your stated title, right? There may be a confusion arise if you actually uh, have, have a title and then ends up the introduction is not aligned with that title. Right, so that's the first thing. Um, uh, the, the second thing is um, literature is in the in the introduction is not intended to be a comprehensive review, all right? It's meant to be an overview of the previous main contributions to the specific discipline as it relates to your your niche or your gap, and um, and lead indeed to the identification of that gap, all right? So um, and it needs to be cited, all right? So you actually need to state um, using an established um, uh, citation method, Harvard or, uh, or others are available depending on your discipline and depending on which uh, journal you're seeking to publish in. Um, and that will um, naturally lead to the next stage, which may be a hypothesis or indeed may be a research problem or research question, all right, depending on uh, the nature of the research. And then lastly, um, uh, you will outline just the um, what is it, the, the research study or design, and then the overview, as we said before, of the structure of the paper or thesis. Okay, so that's, um, that's uh, an overview um, in terms of the um, defining what is a good introduction, the structure and approach, delimitation of study and narrative and flow. Back to you, Prof. Thank you, thank you for Brian. Uh, so the next part, uh, I'm going to focus on uh, three important things that uh, you have to know. Uh, uh, some of these points that I put here, uh, the background information, research question, and theoretical framework, especially the theoretical framework, it differs on the kind of article you're writing. If it's, if it's a thesis, the theoretical framework can actually appear uh, after the literature review. After you review the literature, the theoretical framework appears. But if you see in a lot of uh, journal publication, sometimes there is no heading as a uh, 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 literature review. There is no heading as literature review. It's part of the introduction. So you have an, uh, some of the literature is actually parked inside the uh, uh, introduction chapter, and then it leads towards a framework that you are trying to define. So it, it depends. So, so don't worry too much. Why is the theoretical framework in the introduction? Don't worry about it. But what is key for you to understand is what is theoretical framework and why is it needed for your research. So this is what I'm going to be talking to you about. So first aspect is background information. As what Brian mentioned, uh, when you write an introduction, the background information about the study is important. You're trying to contextualize what the study is all about. <clears throat> so it identifies and, and describes the, the history and nature of, of a well-defined uh, research problem with reference to the existing literature. So, so normally you always tend to refer back to the literature. It should also indicate uh, the root of the problem being studied. It is its scope and the extent to which uh, previous studies have successfully been investigated, okay, the problem. So, so you have to also note uh, the gaps that exist uh, that your study attempts to address. So the, all this information is key when you talk about in the introduction. It differs, okay? Remember, introduction is not the same as literature review, uh, where the research problem is, is the focus in your introduction. So, uh, so the, the detailed literature to support what you're trying to argue will actually appear in the literature review. So in the introduction chapter, uh, you will only highlight a few important uh, citations that is supporting the, the challenges that you're trying to solve or the gaps that you're trying to solve here. So it is important 
for you to have uh, sufficient uh, background information. So background, ex background information expands upon the key points as stated in your introduction, but it's not the, the main focus of the paper. Sufficient background information um, helps uh, your reader to determine if you have a, a basic understanding of the research problem being investigated. And also, it also promotes uh, confidence in the overall quality of your analysis and finding at, at a later stage. So background information provides the reader with uh, the essential context needed to understand the problem. So depending on the, the topic being studied, uh, the forms of contextualization may, may include, maybe you want to focus on the cultural aspect, the economic aspect, uh, historical aspect, philosophical. It can also be based on certain physical aspect or spatial aspect, uh, political, social. So there's so many ways that you can actually scope your, your study, what aspect of the study that you're doing, what is the context of your study. So background information can also include summaries of uh, important uh, relevant research studies. So the key is to summarize for the reader uh, what is known about uh, a specific research problem before you conducted your analysis. So, so this is important for you when you start defining the, the background information. So if you look at the writing style of background, info, uh, background information, so it has to be written very precisely. So providing background information in the introduction uh, of a research paper serves as the, the bridge that links the reader to the topic of your study. But precisely how long and in depth uh, this bridge uh, should be is uh, largely depend on how much information that you think the reader uh, will need in order to understand the research problem uh, that is being uh, discussed. Uh, and to appreciate why the issue you are investigating uh, are important. So given that the, the structure and writing style of your background information can vary depending on the complexity of your research or the, the nature of, your, of the study. So there are some considerations that you need to look at while, while, while writing. First thing there is the concept. Are there concepts uh, terms, theories, or ideas that may be uh, unfamiliar to the reader and thus uh, require for you to give uh, additional explanation. Are uh, there uh, historical elements that uh, need to be uh, explored in order to add the, the, con the needed context, issue, or events, uh, or to lay the, the foundation uh, for the understanding of that particular issue that is being discussed? Or is there a research? Is the research study something unique, unusual, in some way that uh, it requires uh, additional explanation that you need to include? So, so, so these are the things that you need to look at. Whether any additional information is needed uh, to ensure that the reader get the idea what this paper is all about. So that gives you a context. So the background information becomes important. Next is the research problem or question. A statement about uh, an area of concern, uh, a condition to be improved, a difficulty to be eliminated, or a troubling question that exists in the scholarly literature, in theory or in practice, that is uh, that points to the need uh, for meaningful understanding and the deliberate investigation. So that is what a research uh, question is all about. So in some social science discipline, the, the research problem is typically posed uh, in the form of a question, but not necessarily. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Research problem uh, does not state uh, how to do something, okay, but it will offer a, a vague or broad prepositions or, or present or presents a value of the preposition that you're trying to investigate. So, uh, so the problem statement here introduces the reader to the importance of the topic being uh, studied. So this trying to come up with a problem statement and research question sometimes can, if you're, if you're working on a thesis, can actually take you about almost six, seven months just doing that. By just reading through all the literature, you want to come up with the gaps and then come up with your statements. And this is important. Something just to get that one paragraph can take you months. So it introduces the reader uh, to the uh, importance of the topic being studied. The reader is uh, oriented uh, uh, to the study, uh, to the significance of the study. 
and the research question or the, the hypothesis that needs to follow in order for you to solve the or respond to the research question. So it places the, the problem into a particular context uh, that uh, defines the parameters of what uh, is going to be investigated uh, in the particular study. It also provides the framework for reporting the result and also uh, uh, indicate what is probably necessary to conduct the study and explain how the findings uh, will actually support the, the whole study. So if you look at research question, uh, the research problem uh, establishes uh, the means by which uh, you must answer the, the so what question. Okay, so the so what question actually refers to a research uh, problem surviving what we call the relevancy test. So whenever you come up with a research question, always ask the question, so what? Why is it so important? You keep asking so what until you, you reach a point that, that okay, there is, uh, you reach a point where you know if that is exactly what you want to study about. So that so what question makes you think back, is this research question really uh, complete? So answering the so what question uh, uh, requires a, a, a commitment that you have thought about its significance. So once you do the literature review, then you realize that is this something that you really want to investigate? So the, the problem statement should possess uh, the a lot of important attributes, okay? It must be clear and precise. Uh, it should be uh, identified based on literature that has been done before. So normally in most cases, especially uh, if you're doing studies that is replicating based on another study, then that becomes important. Uh, you need to identify uh, what is the overarching uh, question and key factors or, or variables that needs to be, uh, uh, to be discussed the key concepts that needs to be discussed, uh, what is your, your boundaries of the study? Remember, uh, Prof. Brian mentioned about delimitation. So that is key as well. You need to understand what is the parameter because you don't want to be questioned on your study. If you do not have these boundaries or parameters that you are going to be focused on, you can be questioned because the finding may not be generalizable. It has to be generalizable means you have to, you have to ensure that you have a proper scope that is put in place. We will do that a lot when we start discussing on the methodology uh, chapter. So uh, as part of the uh, research question, it is also important to look at how the study is going to benefit. Okay, What is uh, the theoretical benefit or theoretical contribution that's going to come out of it? And what is the practical contribution that's going to come out? And how do you justify that? So if there are some uh, jargons or, or abbreviation or some uh, key terms that you're going to be using, then it has to be explained as well because you don't want to use an unnecessary jargon that is going to confuse uh, what this research question is all about. Let's look at uh, some uh, uh, good and bad research questions. So if you see research question, there are a few important things that you need to look at. Uh, the first one here, a simple question uh, that you're trying to think of, it has gone through the so what uh, testing. So once you've gone through that, then you look at some of the pointers that I put here. What is a good and bad research question? The first one, question should have a complex uh, answer. So when you say complex answer here, so if you see there's two, one is the first point, it's a bad research question. Is there a high power of the universe? The second one, what factors affect people believe in a high power? This is just an example. So you can keep keep the same topic, but change the question uh, to be something that you have the ability to answer within the time period and also within the resources available to you, especially if you're doing your thesis. Okay, you have a time period and resources and can an answer be discovered. So you've got to ensure that your research question is something uh, that is within your limit to do it. A good research question needs to be focused so this is also important. So if you see that the two, uh, one example, the two examples here, bad one and the good one, does medical medication help elevate attention deficit uh, order the, your ADHD symptoms for younger kids? And do kids need more exercise? So rather than having a research question like that, you can have a question that actually very much focus on the medication, how effective area how effective are the various uh, types of medication in treating elementary students with ADHD? So that is a better research question. 
And you have the next one. You can answer uh, a good question. So we see here, is there a high power in the universe? Okay, this is okay. So this is the same as the earlier one there. Okay, there's a typo there. So, so what basically the number three is, is, is talking about is, uh, when you say you can answer a good question, I give an example. Bad is, is when you have a, a question that you are, you are trying to ask the, the, the reader, that question must be something that is relevant at, at the current time. So let's say we're talking about COVID. Uh, so you want to ensure that this research question actually will stand true throughout the period of the study. And sometimes when you generate certain question, uh, the, the, the topic may change the questions to something that may not be relevant after a period of time. So you have to be very careful, uh, especially when you're publishing in journal, technology-based journal, the research question can evolve accordingly and based on when it is published. So you have to be very careful what kind of research question that you're trying to ask. Great questions, uh, okay, sorry. Good questions uh, don't ask for opinions, okay? So remember, research question is not for you to ask someone's opinion. That is not a research question, okay? For example, if you see the two points here, the bad one, which national park is the best? That is not a research question. Okay, the second one, what features do the most popular national parks have in common? So that is a research question. So you make the researcher to actually uh, investigate uh, the features, okay, to see what are the uh, what are the characteristic that is needed, the features that is needed for a national park to succeed, okay. So that is what is being asked uh, in this study. Next one question should be uh, specific. How do artificial sweeteners affect people versus how do aspartame affect post-menopause woman who suffers from migraine. So this, I mean, two different types of questions here. So what basically is trying to show you here is it has to be very specific when you're trying to, to find an answer for a research question. So when the research question is, is too generic, then you have a, a, a problem that it is not really uh, answering the question that you want to uh, ask for. A good research question is original, okay? It's not the same old thing, okay? For instance, uh, advantage and disadvantage of cell phone use in the school. So these are the, the common ones you always hear. So you want to have something more unique. For instance, how does restricting cell phone use in school affect student social interaction? So that is a good research question. A good research question, don't ask why. Okay, Why do some corporate uh, corporation pollute the water if they aren't regulated? So if you look at the good one for the same question, how do government regulation prevent corporation from polluting the water? So if you see here, so I'm not going to go through everything here, but there are ways for you to make sure that the question is able to give you very specific and precise answer that can be researched, can be open to debate, okay? It is able to answer good question with whatever source that is made available. So that is what research question is uh, all about. So what makes a good research statement if you see here, it begins as what uh, Prof. Brian mentioned as well, okay? You start from general and then you go down. So it's the same for research statement as well. It begins by introducing the, the broad area in which you, your research is centered. And then it gradually leads the reader uh, to the more uh, precise research statement that you are trying to investigate. So the statement need not be lengthy, but a good research problem should incorporate uh, all the following uh, features here that you see, compelling topic, okay? It, it builds a curiosity that, that is enough to pursue the, the study. Uh, it should be, uh, it supports multiple perspectives, okay? The problem uh, uh, most of us face is sometimes you look at it in one lens. So when you come up with a research statement, you have to be looking at the different perspective before you come up with, with a good uh, a research uh, statement here. So a general rule of thumb normally is uh, that a good research problem is one that uh, would generate uh, a variety of viewpoints from a composite uh, audience uh, made up of, uh, of people from different areas. And then of course, you also do not, do not confuse a research problem uh, with a research topic, okay? So it has to be 
uh, clear because you want to ensure that any research that is done is researchable. Okay, it can be done within the time frame. A topic, remember, we, we discussed this in the first class. A topic is something to read and obtain information about, whereas a, a problem, a research problem, uh, or research question sometimes is something that you are trying to solve within the frame of the study, okay, that you are trying to discover the answer. There are a few things that you need to remember as well uh, to avoid making uh, mistakes, okay. We have something what we call the circular reasoning, okay. Don't state that the research problem is simply uh, the absence of the thing you are suggesting. So if you look at the example that, that is you see on the screen here, for example, the purpose here, the problem in this community is that it has no hospital. So this only leads to a research problem where the need is for a hospital. The objective is to create a hospital. The method is to plan uh, to plan for building a hospital and the evaluation is to measure if there is a hospital or not. So that is exactly what I mean by a circular reasoning. You are not solving the problem. You're just going round. If A, then B. If B, then A. You're just going round and round and you are not really uh, solving what you intend to solve in the study. So this is an example of a research problem that fails the, the so what test that I mentioned you earlier. It does not reveal the relevance of why you are investigating the problem of having no hospital in the community. Example, there's a, there's a, there's a hospital in the community 10 miles away and because the research problem does not uh, look at the significance of why one should study the fact that there is no ex there's no hospital exists in the community, that becomes an issue because the hospital in the community may be 10 miles away but has no emergency room. So what is the relevance of the study? So you have to be very clear what you're trying to do or else you end up with this uh, circular reasoning. So when you talk about research question, research problem, it also ties to another important aspect that you need to know, which is the framework, okay, the theoretical framework. So theories uh, are formulated to explain, uh, to predict and understand a phenomena and in many cases also to challenge and extend the existing knowledge within the limit of the critical boundaries, uh, bound, critical bounding uh, assumptions that you're making in the study. So the theoretical framework is a structure that, uh, uh, that can hold or support a theory of a research study that is being investigated. So the theoretical framework also introduces and describes the theory, which explains why the research problem is, is being uh, studied uh, in the first place. So uh, a theoretical framework will consist of concepts uh, together with their definitions and existing uh, theories or theories that are used for your particular study. So if you are doing your, your graduate studies, normally this is, becomes important. You have to do a background search to see what are the supporting theories and what is the theories that is going to be used for your study. So the theoretical framework must demonstrate uh, an understanding of theories and concepts that are relevant to the topic of your research paper and that will relate to the broader fields of knowledge uh, uh, in, in the class of your thinking for the study. So the, the theoretical framework is not something that is readily available. It's not that you take something available and then you use it. You have some baseline theory, theories, you can use it and then develop your own framework with the with the premise of the existing uh, theories that is supporting a particular uh, study. So if you see here, this is an example. Yes. So there are a few uh, strategies that you can do to, to come up with an effective uh, framework. Firstly, examine your title and research problem. The research problem normally uh, anchors your entire study and forms the basis of which uh, you want to construct your theoretical framework. Secondly, brainstorm on what you want to, what are the important constructs and variables for your research. So answer the question, what factors uh, contribute to the effect that you want to look for in this study? And then review the related literature to find your answers. This is important. This is where you spend a lot of your time uh, when you start your research. You always start with the literature review. And then list all the constructs and variables that might be uh, relevant for your study. You can group these variables into independent variables and dependent categories if you're doing a 
quantitative based uh, research. And then review the key social science theories, okay, if it's a social science research that can best explain uh, the relationship between all these uh, variables that you are trying to study here. And then you need to also discuss all the assumptions or propositions uh, of this theory and point out their relevance to your research. So that is why in any uh, master's or PhD thesis, uh, this part of it has become very important when you're defending your, your thesis. A theoretical framework is also used to limit the scope of the relevant data that you're trying to focus for the study. So you put a boundary. So within the boundary, you're trying to find a suitable uh, uh, a framework that can actually answer your research question. So that is why a framework becomes important. So finally, uh, it is important for you to clearly describe uh, the framework, the concepts, the models or specific theories that underpin your study because uh, this, uh, uh, this includes uh, noting uh, uh, who the key theories are in the field who have conducted the research. And you will see when, when you are presenting, especially uh, if you're a graduate student, uh, you will get the examiners always asking you this question to ensure that you basically understand the foundation theories that is supporting your uh, study. Position your theoretical framework within a broader context uh, of related frameworks here. So there will be likely uh, be several concepts or theories or models uh, that can be used to help develop your, your framework uh, for understanding the research problem. So you need to make a decision why a particular theory is being selected, okay? So if you see when you're writing uh, this aspect of the paper, the present tense is normally used when writing uh, about uh, theory okay remember that you should also make sure that uh, your theoretical assumption are, are as explicit as possible because later you will use this to actually discuss in your methodology chapter because the moment you have decided this is your framework you're going to be using so then you need to know what are the methodology that need to use to support the framework that you want to test on so so don't just take what the theory says as given you need to see whether does it really apply to your study or not okay so i know it seems very confusing uh, but so when you start doing your your when you start structuring your introduction uh, uh, you have to start thinking about all these things it looks a lot more than you think it is uh, but when you start writing the introduction then you realize that why all these are, are important for you so that is why sometimes you always say that you also write the introduction the last because you want to frame the whole study together if there are some changes that happen along the way because you found something else that came on the from your results and analysis then your introduction chapter have to be amended accordingly because the introduction should tie the whole study together so you don't write something in the introduction and then you did your study and then you found your results and discussion seem to change all together what you intend to do so you have to make an amendment you can start writing first but you have to go back to the introduction and rewrite it to ensure that your finding ties well with the framework, ties well with the research question, responding to the question, you've solved all the gaps that you wanted to study. If it, it has not changed, then make the amendments in your introduction chapter. So go back to introduction, go back to abstract. These two things, you go back the, la the last before you conclude the particular study. All right, so, so that's about it on the introduction side. Now I will uh, hand over to uh, Ms. Pairo Nizan to give us uh, some of the resources that can help you uh, in, for your assistance when you're doing your introduction or generally writing in, any, in, in writing any academic paper in terms of support that you can get from the library. Ms. Pairo Nizan. Okay, thank you, Prabhupi. Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. For today's session, I will share with you some credible resources that provide tips and guides for writing the introduction. Next slide, please. Okay, let's look at briefly the list of online resources and web pages for lesson four. I would like to highlight one of the links from the Writing Center, University of North Carolina. So you just click on the hyperlink and you will be directed to the web page and you can find comprehensive information on the function of introduction, 
strategies for creating effective introduction and some examples of less effective introduction to avoid. Next slide, please. Okay, the listed um, resources will provide guides and useful examples related to structure, writing styles, and writing tips when you are writing your introduction. Next slide, please. Okay, please take some time to explore these resources as uh, the tips and example provided will help to deepen your understanding on how to write a good introduction for your academic research paper. So thank you very much. And I will pass back the session to uh, Prof. B. Thank you, Farunizan. So all the resources that you saw there, the hyperlinks are there for you. So uh, once you get a copy of the slide, you can just click on it and more details, uh, whatever we have given to you in the session today is a summary of it. It may look so confusing for you, but the more details, uh, elaboration in those resources. Uh, if you are at the stage of writing, uh, if you're at the stage of doing your graduate studies, uh, I'm sure all those resources will really be helpful to you. All right now, so uh, is there any questions or feedback from any participants? Uh, I don't see any questions uh, in the chat. Remember, as I've said, this session is recorded, so you will get a copy. If you have missed the last two sessions and you want a set of the presentation, so don't hesitate uh, to, to contact us. Anybody is in the world of writing or in progress writing their paper and they are stuck somewhere. It can be in any part of it. Uh, if you want to raise something that you want to bounce off some ideas or you have some challenges, please do not hesitate to, uh, to discuss. No? Okay. So uh, I see there's something in the chat. Uh, no question. Okay, no. All right, so if there's no question, so we will see you in two weeks time. Uh, the next chapter is on literature review, uh, which is an important chapter because that will form the basis of what you want to study. When you talk about coming up with a gap, uh, you want to know what is a research gap and then come up with a research question, the literature becomes important. In many cases, uh, I've supervised a lot of uh, graduate students before. Whenever I get the student, I will tell them, I don't want to see you for the next six months. The six months, you just do literature review. Just go and read whatever you can, and then you come back. So it becomes an important chapter. So how do you manage that? So ensure you come for our session, next session. Please do register so that uh, you get a, a reminder. So once you get a reminder that comes to your email, please save that in your calendar because if you don't save it in the calendar, it may get lost in your email inbox. So please try to save it immediately to your calendar. So that will ensure that you, you're, you do not miss the session. All right. If there is no other question, so thank you once again uh, for coming and uh, we hope to see you in the next session. Have a good weekend and stay safe as always. Bye-bye. Thank you, Prof. Ryan, and thank you, uh, Farunita.